It is April the 3rd, and you are watching The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back with another episode. It is, when are we recording this? Uh, some, some Saturday, somewhere in the middle of Easter. So, uh, <laughs> April 3rd. April 2021. 3rd. There you go. 13 um, months after the. No flies in the week. Don't. We're still that's standing. Not, let's not talk about the pandemic right now. <laughs> At least, well, my mom, my mom has had her first vac vaccination now, so uh, she's got yeah, her first shot. Yeah, yeah. My parents have. Uh, my father has both of them. My mother's uh, getting vaccinated, and well, I have no idea. In Germany, everything takes a bit longer. In, in good old yeah. Germany, um, Ireland. Uh, Ireland Brazil, as well. Yeah, not, Brazil not so. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're still not last news, on the yeah. scale for sure. Um, back to photography. I have a quick, a quick um, uh, follow up to uh, to the <laughs> to our controversial NFT episode. Controversial, was it? <laughs> well, it, it's it's. I mean, we. I think we did a fairly good job in uh, in explaining some of it and then we uh didn't do a good job in explaining all of it so there's still a lot of open questions for sure oh yeah and um I'm gonna admit something i did put it on to listen to it I and you had to stop <laughs> <laughs> i fell asleep yeah um so <laughs> i was so riveted <laughs> as a as a as an auxiliary uh listening um, information device. I can suggest. Uh, I want to suggest a podcast episode of the A16Z podcast, all about NFTs, which um, as to date has been the most comprehensive, uh, most concise explanation of what it is, what the hype is, what they expect to happen, how this all fits in with the current landscape. So um, we're going to put a link to that in the show notes because I listened to this and there were like a whole bunch of they, they look at it from almost every angle and uh, I I had several aha moments uh, several times going oh light bulb moments um, in that and I thought I understood it well so that is a that's a good little hey would you stop playing um, that's a good a good uh, naughty primer, robot for sure yeah naughty and, robot you yes. know. It, it really, there's no, there's no bottom to the. No, of course not. Of course not. Out. It's just like, whoa. How how deep how deep the rabbit hole goes? I will uh, show in my pick of the week today. Um. Anyway, oh. I think we're going into atoms and molecules and analogs <laughs> and things mm -hmm. you can touch and hold and feel and use. <laughs> Yes, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. We're talking cameras. When, when for for each of you, Adrian, uh, Imar, and Jeremiah, when's the last time you bought a camera, Jeremiah? Uh, I bought a new camera about two years ago, maybe. Um, okay. The, the Leica, the Q2. That okay. was the last thing. I, I like Adrian. Traded in a lot of stuff that I didn't want, didn't use, and uh, coughed up a little bit of extra coin and a lot of extra coin. And bought this camera, mm -hmm. and I've um, never been so happy with a camera. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't even remember when I bought the the last cameras, which were the uh, Canon 5D Mark IV and the 7D Mark II, two DSLRs. But uh, it's pretty much when the 5D Mark IV came out, so it's a few years ago. Um, I haven't bought another camera since. Adrian, how about you? Uh, about five, six months ago. So I, I traded uh, my Fuji X-T1 for a Fuji X-T3, which, which was a, a used one, wasn't a current model at the time, uh, because I needed to do a lot more video like we're doing now, but also for, for work stuff. Uh, and the old X-T1, as good as it was as a camera, you couldn't get a clean HDMI out of it. So it wasn't going to be good for, for uh, video meetings. Uh, so that was when I got that one. Um, uh, and of course, around about the same time, got a new phone, which has lots of cameras in it. 
Uh, oh yeah, I didn't count the phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and about two days ago, whilst digging around in a in a cupboard, I found a pinhole camera, which was awesome. I have a, a fantastic pinhole camera, uh, which I I had no idea where it was. I'd completely forgotten about it. <laughs> which, which one is that? Uh, it's called a Reality So Subtle, uh, which is, I believe, a, f- a French brand um, made, made by uh, made by hand by by I think a single person. Um, I happen to have the six by twelve centimeter version. Um, and it has um, one of the things it does to it a couple of couple of good gimmicks it has one is it has two pinholes but they're set on the thirds um, so uh, you can have uh, you can have your horizon line either on the lower third or on uh, by opening the top hole or on the upper third of the image by having the uh, yeah what you've got on screen there looks very much like it uh, or indeed so so it, it as anybody has a pinhole camera might know um very often it's difficult to get the, the horizon to be off center. Um, it's very much straight through the middle of the, of the image, but the ones with two pinholes that are, are vertically mounted, you can get the your horizons on the thirds. Uh, it's the most challenging to load camera I've ever had because it has this really convoluted mechanism where it's a curved film playing around a semicircle and you have to thread it through the body. And or, But it's a fantastic camera anyway. But it must, it must be nice and wide angle. Uh, yeah, it is. Well, as a six six by twelve medium format film, of course, to, uh, to get the six by twelve centimeter image, um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it gives it gives a fantastic wide angle. <laughs> we want okay. to see some pictures. Yes, we do. Uh, I haven't taken any recently, but I can dig some out of the archives. <laughs> All right, so let's get to Imar, and the reason I'm putting Imar last is because this episode will be all about her. So um, sure, sure. you have, sure. you have. Uh, well, we, after last episode, we talked about what what should we talk about on this episode, and Imar, you are in the market for a new camera. Is that true? When yeah, well, when did I last what? buy a camera? Which you just <laughs> asked everybody. My son is 17 years old, so I just realized. That's the last time I bought a camera. So when dinosaurs years. ruled the earth. <laughs> when dinosaurs <laughs> ruled the earth, yeah. So I spent a while just becoming overwhelmed in not knowing what I want now. Um, I want something ultimately that I don't want to put down, that I want to um, bring everywhere with me. iPhone. And <laughs> no, no, it's making me lazy. Joke, it's making me joke. lazy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's making me lazy. And I want the feel of a camera in my hand again. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So so you're, yeah. you're missing that? You've been missing that for a while? Uh, well, I am. Well, I'm talking every week to you three who just constantly talk about all your different cameras and your collections of cameras. And yeah, I'm starting to feel so a little is bit boys. left out. We're boys. We, we like stuff and yeah. toys. And is that, yeah, yeah. Is Are that, you talking about film or digital? Digital, I think, because I like the idea of still editing maybe with the phone and the iPad and stuff like that. So it'd be nice to have something that it's easy to transfer uh-huh. the files. Like It's a clear case of FOMO on stuff. your side. Absolutely. Mm. Fear of missing out. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, I've seen lovely things. Uh, some of them have very lovely price tags. <laughs> um, so I want the best bang for my book. C- can I ask a couple of pointed questions? Mm. Mm. Okay. So you want okay. a camera that feels like a camera that is inspiring yeah. to hold, that provokes yeah. and promotes That's lovely that. to look at. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want interchangeable lenses? This is... Yes, okay. I do. Because yeah. I, I think yeah. that is very uh, important in, in making the decision yeah yeah, yeah 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 um okay so interchangeable so that narrows it down a bit so yeah do you want something that is light or heavy now you see if it was something really oh if it's something that i just couldn't resist i wouldn't mind if it was a little bit heavier but portability is definitely a factor so something that i don't mind could it be that over the last 17 the years you, you've lost the ability to carry a heavy camera? Not from a strength <laughs> point of view, but from a, from a, from will, a conceptual from a point of view. Well, 
Well, practicality, let's face it. I want something I can kind of, yeah, carry around with me all the time. Like if it fits in my bag without a whole kit to go along with it, you know? Ah, okay. Something. Can, can I ask a question? Because uh, what, what is it that you would like to shoot? What kind of images do you want to make? Probably fairly similar in subject to what I'm doing already. I just I want to be able to do it a bit better. Ah, okay. So yeah, you're not I don't you're, think you're not suddenly going to be yeah become no, a sports like photographer, a and photographer and need the fastest no. camera in the world. No, 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 no. Well, that that helps because that that'll broaden better. your choices. Because yeah. if it's about you know if it's not critical sure. that this is the super speediest camera ever which is often a trade-off for size no it doesn't need to be i, ju- I want it to make me more intentional about ah. the pictures so, i take mm-hmm. so you want something that is both automatic for quick quick shooting and something that is manual for more comprehensive well, if i want something for automatic quick shooting i've got the phone so but most yeah, digital you know, cameras this, have an a yeah, I have the ability to do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. But I think yeah. the adjunct yeah. is you want something that you can adjust the shutter speed, the you know, the aperture yeah. and any other. Yeah, and change the lens. Do you want yeah. something yeah. that shoots in raw so you can have the ability yeah. to have a higher quality image and, you know. Absolutely. Adjust, so. Yeah. Okay. I, I kind of have aspirations to printing. Ah, as well. talk in my language. Mm. Interesting. So. What about video? I would probably use it for video, but I have other ways to take video. So video is not really a massive um, consideration. Uh, how how often do you shoot video on your iPhone? Not that often. Not okay. that often. No. Do any of you Might shoot a lot of video on your iPhone? Uh, that's an interesting question. I do occasionally, I not as often to. as I'd like to. Just um, a memory hog, right? I mean, well, just, I do well, though. I do though. Can, yeah, I, 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 some, I often shoot like a little five second thing of something yeah, because I find yeah. it interesting. Little clips are more, yeah. more, more of a more of a notebook mm. kind of uh, function there, yeah. but uh, but sometimes it's something that yeah feels better ha- having it in video and then uh, yeah. So finding so okay so. What you're looking for, if if you had said video, I would have I would have I would have brought up the German term um, when when someone wants something that does everything. We call yeah, this an egg laying wool milk pig. <laughs> egg laying wool milk pig. Eier legen de Wollmilchsau. That's a German term. Oh man, I love that word. Um, if I could pronounce it, I would love But that. but but since you haven't added video in that, that's not quite what you're looking for. Yeah. The huh. video is not important to me, really. Yeah. And then, and then you said you want this uh, to be uh, within a certain budget. Have I mean, I do not have well, all the camera prices in my mind. So, question: I'm Not no, sure we can answer no, that. No, but, but like, um, you, you know, a thousand euros, I would be my limit. Oh, I you think. could you could do super well with that. I think Less, I could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. if you uh, were yeah. happy ah, to have one that was used. There are lens issues. I thought about that too. <laughs> so while the body could be well yeah. within your budget mm. lenses not all uh, what can mm. add what is your last big camera you do already have one with interchangeable uh, lenses I've right i got uh, yeah and it's um 550d a canon 550d so you do have canon lenses old, already old, old. i do well your uh, system with with any current mirrorless camera uh, especially from the same Will brand, fit you my have, lenses. It's, it's easy. You can you can have an adapter. I, I think those mirrorless cameras actually come with an adapter, um, so you can okay. keep using the old glass. It's uh, funny, none of the cameras uh, really uh, grab my attention. Sure, I'm, that. Like, I'm not convinced that that is in oh. the. I mean, I think we would be more. But adding another clunky thing, you know, it's just, it 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 does it uh, does take a bit away from the portability. That is for sure because I just think it's the tail wagging the dog. If you're t- you're thinking about adapters, we, she needs a yeah. fresh start. Ah, I do. I need a fresh start. That is like <laughs> unboxing <laughs> yeah. and is yeah. like wow! Yeah. I can't wait to get out I to this use thing. this. Yeah, Not, yeah. oh, That's this old lens yeah. mm, it just has all this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll argue yeah. against that on. Emer's behalf, mm-hmm. if I so, 
if I if I may. I suppose I can always sell those lenses. Mm -hmm. as oh sure. Well to kind of fee feed towards my I mean, budget for the new. I've I've lenses. grown up. I've grown up on thirty five millimeters. So for me, uh, anything full frame would be perfect for 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 a fresh start because that would make me feel at home. Mm -hmm. That would that would give me a kind of a sense of uh, yeah of um, of knowing what I'm what I'm doing. So, so you're saying that you mm. actually grew up? Oh, that's a, that's a, <laughs> 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 that was a bit hmm. slow. Hmm. I grew. Okay, I grew. Well, I can, I'm going to take it. You grew old. Okay, grow yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I, I can, I can speak for the uh, the Fuji line of cameras, which happens to be what I, I shoot with. Um, they do uh, one of the good things about the Fuji cameras is as you get into the 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 smaller bodies, uh, that what what would be a mid range camera for Fuji, uh, they keep the same sensor, so you've still got really good image quality. They tend to lose some flexibility around video, but you're saying you don't want that anyway, mm -hmm. and uh, you end up with something that feels really nice in the hand, has amazing image quality, is quite small, and often is reasonably affordable. Um, there strangely, are. strangely enough, the one that jumped out at me the most was I have a link to it in the the workflow. -y, um, was a Fuji camera, and I've never had a Fuji camera, but I like the look of it so much. Well, I've had it's old tons school of them. looking. Like I really like the look of it, and I don't know if I'm just being seduced by the look of it. Oh, it's but I always keep a part. It's always a part. I mean, yeah. no, I, you, I think you want that. I wouldn't want and to shoot with an ugly camera. That look, yeah, the other the other ones that really look good are the Leicas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not sure you get one of them for under a thousand euros. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, speaking of budget, mm. might get a strap. There's some second hand ones. <laughs> oh I, yeah, I mean, they don't nice lose their ones. their value very fast. And and again, mm. when you start thinking about lenses, and there are alternatives to like a glass, but Mm. And I have several of those kinds of lenses. I think there are Seven Art, Seven Arts, I'm, I think Japanese firm that makes some. But you know, you have to take them apart and adjust the focal plane, and you know, you get what you pay for. They're not that expensive, mm. but why buy a Leica mm. if you're not buying Leica glass? Because Leica glass is what is the principal driver of of Leica cameras. Yeah. Um, so, so your your link that you put in the show notes there, Ema, then to 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 mm. uh, a kit that was that is based around a Fuji XT30 um, yeah, camera. Yeah. Uh, do you know? I almost bought exactly that uh, last year. Yeah. Um, uh, I ended up going with the 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 one up from that in their range, the XT3, rather than the XT30, because precisely right. because I was looking for some flexibility around video. Um, yeah. You know, as a camera, the XT30 is a is is probably a better fit for me than the, the XT3. But because I wanted video as well, I had to go the yeah, next yeah. step up. What I would yeah, say I, is, I have you? Um, I mean, you've got the 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 XT30 with a a small compact zoom lens. Um, great option. Have you looked mm. at the? Uh, very recently, Fuji released a next generation in the mid range camera, a thing called the XE4. Um, uh, sorry, I missed the the X X E four. The um, X E four. So so I'm the X sure I... so the the X T range is is the mid range of SLR looking cameras. They're all mirrorless, of course, but okay. um, the mm -hmm. X E range is the uh, is the similar size, similar small um, range finder type. Into range finder mm -hmm. in the sense of the layout of it, not in the sense of it's actually mm -hmm. got a range finder. It's still a mirrorless camera with a with an electronic viewfinder. Um, but the XE4 mm -hmm. has uh, a newer generation of technology in it than the XT30, and I believe is a similar price. Okay. I believe you can get a oh. kit for around a thousand euros, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe, maybe Chris, mm -hmm. Chris is doing some some shopping as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> they look nice. Yeah. <laughs> They're lovely, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I like the metal body. You know, I like. So the the, the one kind of thing, sturdy look. the one thing that I can say mm. about Fuji is um, I have never really spent a lot of time with Fuji cameras, with the let's say the ones from the last five to ten years. Um, I've held 
a few of them on different workshops. Um, and I really like the feel. I really like the, the haptics of them. And mm -hmm. what I hear from a lot of people who are Fuji fans is that uh, it took them to hold one and to spend a bit of time with one and then they fell in love. And a lot of people, most mm -hmm. people who started mm -hmm. looking at Fujis ended up liking them. So I think <laughs> that's, that's certainly I, what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's, I think that's one thing that's, that might help you decide is to get your hands on one, um, borrow yeah, it from it, somewhere, really... find a, find a shop that, uh, <laughs> that's that, open. <laughs> well, that's kind of a problem, <laughs> there is that. but <laughs> kind of a problem. Is, yeah. is there, In the before times you could just rent one. Is there, yeah. is there a mail? Yeah. Is there rental? Somewhere. I don't. I don't know if that's possible. Probably not for these types end. of cameras. Is is anyone who's mm. listening to this, to this or watching this, in Ireland and has a Fuji XC4 to give to Imar for a week? Yeah, that would be good. Just, that, would, yeah, that would be amazing. Be excellent. It would be great. Drive it over. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be really good. Yeah. All or right. if anybody has any suggestions or secondhand cameras to um, sell, why I, not? I could speak to the oh. Fuji because a I I have some. Uh, I have a six by nine Fuji, which I like film, mm -hmm. but uh, I also bought the XT100 when it came out, the the first mm -hmm. sort of like a copy, and I too fell in love with it. I thought for the price and the lenses, the haptics of it, the rangefinder of it, which I I like, I thought mm -hmm. it was a fantastic camera. And, but it, for me, it was it was a glide path to ultimately getting getting the Leica um, because I just felt the glass was so much better and there was an aesthetic that I liked. So I've been through the the Fuji world. Uh, I I played around, but I never I never uh, committed to the Sony's, but which have very very good quality. But I would not recommend them because I think the interface. Uh, is an interface designed very much by engineers rather than by photographers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, it, it requires um, kind of menu love, and that's something I do not like. Mm -hmm. I like everything. I didn't like, like the look of them anyway. Yeah, like, Chris, I, I, like, I like to know where everything is in my hands. Mm -hmm. It's just innate. Mm -hmm. So I rejected the Sonys, not because of the quality, because their quality is really strong. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, um, for a lot of reasons, in the mirrorless camp of, uh, of cameras using the Panasonic, the Lumix. And I think the, the Lumix mm -hmm. is a very, very strong contender in the Fuji realm. Um, the quality is astounding. The, the lenses are kind of a co-production between lights and, and Panasonic. Um, very reason, reasonably priced, like the Fuji, I think they're in the same realm. Um, they have a variety of cameras and, you know, you can get a beautiful macro lens. You can, you can do all of that. Um, and it's, it's this one, I think, but, but I will go with something that I think you will really love. Um, this may be the, the newest version of it. I, I'm looking for it. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's it's interchangeable lenses. Okay. It has all yeah. manual, mm -hmm. but it is it's lovely and small. It's very small, mm -hmm. but it it mm -hmm. operates very much like a okay. much bigger camera. Yeah, it's not a full frame. It's it's a three, you know, a two thirds micro two thirds. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I I I love this camera, and I have the bigger Fuji, which I use for macro and. And, mm -hmm. and I use it on a tripod for digitizing negatives and, and the rest of that. Mm -hmm. I've tried it out on the podcast, but I don't have a lens mm -hmm. that I can reach mm -hmm. and, sh and focus. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out too well, because Chris would always say, mm -hmm. you're blurry. <laughs> so <laughs> forget about using it. So what, cam what exactly again, camera I, is that, Jeremiah? Uh, this one is called, it's a DC ZS200. There may be an a, a version of it, you know, and you could see it's, you know, all inter interchangeable lenses. And I think this is interchangeable lenses. Yeah. Um, I had this converted or this one may be a 24 to 360, but I, 
I just love this camera. Another thing that I did, I have a another one that's smaller that is, um, this one has been converted to infrared, so um, I use it very specifically. But I would very much uh, opt for Fuji and, and uh, Panasonic. They, they have a range from these very small ones with interchangeable lenses to very mm. big ones, uh, relatively. Um, I, I like feel that I'm kind of leaning with Chris about if nowadays of going with a full frame 35 for, mm. <clears throat> for your depth of field and your bokeh, all of that stuff, knowing your work, I think would be really, um, it would really benefit by your selective mm. focus when you photograph, like mm. shooting wide open and mm -hmm. and I, I you know then you could start to play with ND filters to get your mm -hmm. depth of field right and yeah. and so either choice I think um, I would go with either the the Fuji or the Panasonic. It depends if you want a rangefinder or you want a viewfinder like. Yeah, I do like viewfinder. We have Panasonic. We have Fuji in the mix. Mm. Um, how about the, the mirrorless, the, the big, the big companies, Canon and, uh, Nikon and their mirrorless cameras. You mean yep. those antique companies? There's, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they are, are they, are they really? I mean, they are, they they're are not the, innovating. They're not innovating. Not as much, right? Um, and None it's probably, it's probably, out at me. and it's probably outside your price range. When we're looking at their their bigger don't, don't mirrorless Canon ones, do some don't Canon do some mirrorless ones that are with a, an APS-C size sensor, so they'd be smaller, and I think that, you know are um, less expensive as well. Like a, a is there a Canon M fifty or M something? M fifty like M fifty is uh, one of those that I I hear a lot about, but I haven't really looked into that as much. Um, I think I want something different. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was Fair a quick enough. decision. <laughs> looking at the Canon now, I'm thinking, no, yeah. No Canon. I think, okay. no, Canon, I think no, Jeremiah Sony, got no, the nail on the head. Uh, I need Nikon, a fresh start. No. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, right. another, that's another way to get yeah. to, your, to your goal by exclusion, right? So um, it's Canon, no, yeah, absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes. Um, no. No, no Nikon. I, um, nothing grabbed me. Like, I've, I've been watching all these review videos and... I just I, got. I hear, here's an idea for you. Is there um, a good mm. Canon shop in Dublin? There must be a good one. Yeah, Big there one. would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They may or may not be open, but it's yeah. possible maybe to call them and mm -hmm. say you're in the market for a camera. You just mm -hmm. like like to feel both. They may Test may drive. say, "Come, you yeah. know, we'll let you into the store yeah. alone. You'll be double yeah. masked and all of that stuff." Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you have to hold the camera. As soon as you hold the camera, you're going to yeah, go. Yeah, you'll know. Ah, I mm. love this. That's the one. <laughs> and and so <laughs> Yeah, there's one in Cork. Yeah. I, I do I do feel that there is a um it's it's a challenge. For me, I think it's between Lumix and and Fuji. They're they're very both feel good. Uh, they are different in terms of their design and interoperability. I've used yeah. both. I have no favorites. In other words, my Leica has now replaced my love for the Fuji. So I, it's not that I don't like the Fuji. It's that I, yeah. I've been lucky enough to be able to afford mm. to work with Leica. Um, so that's really it. I, uh, uh, but mm. both are really, really strong. But I think finally... You have to hold it, feel it, and and just feel how natural it wants to be. Feels, Go home yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you? And so did you all notice? Definitely, if you want to carry it around every day. And did you all notice that we have not a single second in this podcast so far talked about uh, image quality, pixels, uh, oh, well, no noise, need, and so on? Because no, because that no, is a non-issue at this point. It's it is non not an, it's yeah. a non-issue. Cameras are all good. There there are no bad cameras on the market. And no. uh, and Jeremiah, I'm 100 percent with you. What I what I recommend to people who ask me that question is, go to the shop, 
and <coughs> feel them, play with them, and you will instantly notice which one fits your hands, which one fits your your mental model of, 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 of how do a camera should operate. Um, some people are so happy with yeah. uh, Sony cameras because they are more yeah. more inclined towards uh, the 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 the. the Let, let's say side. being able to play <laughs> with the camera and, and going right. deep right. into menus and that kind of stuff. Other yeah, people, they like that. Sure. Yeah, other people want the want the buttons. Mm. Other people want the dials. Um, go go find a way to touch those cameras. Mm. I think that's really. I don't key. think I've yeah. ever bought a camera. I mean, again, we're lucky, but I've I've always rented uh, whatever camera I've wanted to work with and taken it away for a weekend and really ground it out. Uh, yeah, the last I've done that I with did. lenses as well. Even for thinking sure. about buying new lenses, yeah, often um, I te uh, tell you when is good to rent stuff. Ema is uh, over holiday periods uh, because then often the rental houses close, and for for two days rental cost, you can get a week's rent time with something. Um, I know it's not the right yeah. time of year, but but Christmas is the most awesome time to rent camera gear because <laughs> yeah. you have time off <laughs> and you get about 12 days rental for the price of two days. Uh, yeah. And so you can really have a play with stuff. Yeah, um, but I've Christmas won't be past. around for a while. So. No, it's not. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can wait that long. But, but, and, uh, but and if you I can get it over, even just a bank holiday, even just a bank holiday weekend, you know, yeah. a public mm. holiday weekend would be good because you, then you at least you get an extra day, you know, and stuff like yeah, that. So. Yeah. And I have my doubts oh. that uh, the cameras that we just talked about uh, are going to be on available from rental companies because they mm. usually concentrate on the bigger sports type camera so in the uk yeah, you can maybe. i mean here here um, they are you can get anything but but uh i think and i think there's a big house in london that that has everything but i'm, I'm just not sure there, there's loads in in, yeah. in and around london but um in the uk it, there's one that i use um which will which has lots of different brands um, mm -hmm. And uh, what they won't have particularly is the entry level ones, um, but so right. to, to rent out. But they will have the the top end or okay. closer to, to the know. top end ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's quite. I mean, I, I've done it. I mean, you know, a couple of Christmases ago, I rented both the Fuji sixteen mils. I thought, you know what, I'm quite I quite fancy having a sixteen mil. And Fuji do two. They do one that's small and lightweight, but of course a little bit slower, and one that's bigger and heavier and faster. And uh, by the end of my 10 days, I wasn't using either of them. And I put other lenses on the camera. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to buy either of these then. <laughs> Fun though it's been, I'm not going to buy either of them. Um, uh, and stuff like that. So it really good idea to, to rent. Um, yeah. Some places will do a sort of sale or return type thing. Uh, you know that where you can send it back if it's if it's not fit to your liking mm. um, even for used cameras so I, I use um, uh, I, I I have used and would use again definitely a company called MPB here in the UK oh, yeah. uh, Same here. For, for, they have branches I think now in Germany and the USA mm. I haven't heard of them um, and uh, they, they well they started out mm. uh, here in the UK I believe in, in Brighton Um But I bought my Fuji X-T3 from them and I bought lenses from them. And they have, I think, a two-week return policy. So yeah. not only do I've, you get I've it more affordable, but you can send it back if you don't like mm -hmm. it. There's no mm -hmm. questions asked. Okay. Also, you know, something that, you know, you may not want to uh, reject out of hand. I know we've kind of talked about digital and the like. Mm -hmm. But if you were to go with a film camera... Uh, <laughs> I guess she's not going to be Go invited on. to Sunny 16 uh, anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm, I shouldn't be invited. I don't shoot hardly any film these days. They still you, let me do Sunny 16. They don't even speak your name there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, but uh, obviously, if you would go in the direction of film, if you could figure out a way of getting your negatives simply, um, mm. uh, you know, from the lab, um, yeah. digitized, Uh, that is a much more inexpensive way to explore interchangeable and cameras mm. and, and film. Now, that is a Maybe, really good point, Jeremiah. That is yes. a really good point, yeah. Because yeah. even though the price of film cameras has gone up, 
they're still a lot cheaper than buying a new digital camera. And, mm. you know, you could go through many rolls of film, including having it processed and scanned by a lab, as Jeremiah suggests, uh, you know, before you get anywhere close to the the, the mm. whole life cost of a digital camera and a couple of lenses. So Sure. And even mm. scanning your stuff at the labs, um, you know, on a kind of a moderately good quality scan, that's a JPEG, you could play with it. And if there was one or two shots out of that roll that you went, wow, this, I really want to go yeah. deeper here. Yeah, yeah. You can then have that rescanned or do it yourself. I mean, there's a lot of ways we yeah. can help you yeah. do that. A, a lot of labs over here um, allow you to choose sure. whether you want JPEG or TIFF files yep. as your scan. Here so too. the yeah, TIFF yeah, files yeah. are bigger. Obviously, you'll need so more storage, but you that get that much more data. completely either. And talk yeah. about, you know, you... I'm not talking about the lenses, but you could probably get a used like a M6 for close to a thousand. I'm thinking. Oh, really? Still? Maybe not. I thought they were well uh, well <laughs> above that not. in this country. Maybe there are three. May maybe uh, without, without a lens. lens. Maybe without a lens. Maybe without a lens. Yeah. Oh no, definitely without a lens. Just yeah. talking about No good without a lens. <laughs> but so, they, you know, there are a great I deal of, of cameras and yeah. even exploring a two and a quarter, like a, a Rolleiflex or a Rolleiflex. So Imar, oh, yeah, no, that'd be fun. Imar, mm -hmm. what are, you are buy? we are <laughs> we are we helpful? Is this helping you in any way, shape, or form? It, it absolutely is helping me in any way. Um, I still think I'm I'm still leaning towards the digital, but um, yeah, it's giving me a little bit of food for thought. Okay. Well, um, anyway. Good. You know, he, here's yeah. a here's an odd thing. I know it just kind of blurted it I out. I need to figure out how to get my hands on. And some cameras you could I? probably buy yeah. a really beautiful beautiful roloflex used that is in mint condition mm -hmm. 300 euros I'm, I'm guessing now but i i, I think yeah. you could do that around there just a good solid two and a quarter film camera yeah but think of that Three, what I about here, the film? three or four hundred dollars would would. I mean, you know, it, one thing shooting film would certainly do is make your photography really purposeful. I mean, you would. Yes. Yeah, you would yeah, that's yeah. what yeah. we're talking yeah. about, isn't it? You, you, you get really yeah. into that. Yeah. Into that. Uh, okay, every yeah. shot is valuable, and you have to, have to make it mm. count. Mm. Uh, Especially with twelve frames, mm. so yes. then you're really committing. Yeah. You're composing. You're looking at. You're you're making a picture really. Yeah. And yeah. then you have. 12 frames to digitize, not that bad. Even a simple JPEG yeah. of a two and a quarter, you'll be blown away by its blown away by, yeah, vitality yeah. on screen. Wow. And it won't cost you an arm and a leg. You don't have to get extra lenses. And then you may even have some money left over for yet another digital camera. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be oh. along our path. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds but, good. But but I, I wouldn't reject yeah. it because those cameras mm. are workhorses. Um, you can throw them in a bag. They're not heavy. And they it's still are relatively easy to as Chris said. get that, the that film. That, I think, is one of the exciting things about using yeah. those kinds of cameras. Mm -hmm. It is easy to get the film. Like, there's no oh, issues with easy. the vet. Yeah. Easier than ever now. I can teach you how yeah, to develop yeah. your own black and white. It's mm. not it's not difficult. And it's, it's not expensive either. I did it. I, I did know how to do it once. There you go. It's easy, <laughs> it's easy to relearn. It's like, and it's like easy riding to, a bicycle. By the way, it's also extremely mm. easy to scan your, your pictures at home too. I can show you how to do that. There's mm. some... Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so just set up a lab where you are and... Uh, <laughs> and, we, and, we could follow, and we could follow this here on the show. Hey, that would be, sure, even turn yeah. into content. How about that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> then we can mint an NFT. <laughs> there you are. There you are. <laughs> So I'm, what I might do is if I find anything like secondhand like that, I might just put it in the Discord and say, okay, what what do you think? What yeah, you and and put it and put it in, into no. put it in not 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 just into our private Discord part, but into, into the public mm -hmm. one. And uh, oh, yeah, let, let's yeah. let's let's have, let's have the listeners um, chime in because help. Yeah, that yeah. Might be, be good. Adrian, MBP is only digital stuff, as I recall, right? Uh. They may have some medium format stuff, but uh, but even that might be digital. Yeah, so I was just looking at it myself. Actually, they have the XT30 at EMA for from five hundred and seventy four pounds. That's that's used. Mm. Um, mm. 
but uh that's so yeah you bet you'd certainly be able to pick up a camera and two lenses for your thousand euros if you if you were to get them yeah which to get them used yeah. uh the the yeah. like new ones are 600 pounds um, so just by way of uh, just by way of uh, mm, mm. example, they they, they are I cheaper keep shopping and, and browsing. Mm, mm. Okay, so with that, I think we um, we can we don't really have an answer about what does that mean for the future of e-commerce photography, but it <laughs> is uh, suggestions welcome. You know, at least some something that like we've that. kicked off here, maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you will mm. certainly keep us in the loop here. We'll ask you every week now, Absolutely. so you have a bit of pressure yeah. behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it? Did you get it? Did <laughs> yes, you get exactly. It? <laughs> okay, <laughs> and with that, I think we can switch over to the picks of the week. We have a whole bunch of picks. I've, mm. I'm, I'm starting. I'm starting with mine, which is um, NFT related, because we talked <laughs> about NFTs, and this one popped into my uh, timeline. <laughs> Um, with uh, someone apparently, uh, and it, it's an April Fool's joke, but um, it took me a second to realize that because this this guy claimed that uh, they uh, bought an NFT of the NFT that points to his own artwork of digital art for $10 million. So <laughs> it's a nested NFT. And while that is not impossible to make, to do with uh, the structure of NFTs, it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's a really nice article that uh, goes into details about how this works and what it means, and it's a lot of it's a lot of buzzwords and things, and it doesn't really mean anything. But um, I th I think the moment when these kind of memes and things are made about something, it means that that thing is probably uh, it has some level of importance. So. Uh, the NFTs. Well, it's here. NFTs. It's here to stay. We just hope it uh, seeks a level that's not so frothy and, and is just will. another way to present work. And it that's will. That's going to happen. And soon. Adrian, you have chosen an app. Tell us about that one. Yeah, I have. So, well, regular listeners will know that uh, although I like to do a lot of my editing on uh, iOS devices, either a phone or, or an iPad. There are very few uh, that allow you to do selective edits. And we noted a couple of weeks ago that Snapseed for iOS doesn't seem to have been updated in a year. Uh, and so things things are changing. So so this is the app Polar, P-O-L-A-R-R, uh, which uh, I've been playing around with a little bit this week, reacquainting myself because I had tried it out in the past quite a long time ago. And uh, it has a, a great um, functionality to make selections. Uh, so you can make selections to do selective edits. You can you can brush masks, but you can do things like um, you know radial uh, selections and linear gradient selections and and things like that as well. So so for anybody that's out there using mostly uh, mobile devices to do their editing, uh, you know check out Polar for its ability to do selective edits. It's interesting because mm -hmm. Polar has been around for a while, and I've played with it years ago and. Even even talked to their CEO a while ago, and um, th 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 they they were very AI driven behind the scenes. Very um, yeah, trying trying to incorporate that into photography and editing. And what I liked is that they were pretty much on every platform. So there's a web, even a web based client. There's a Windows one, a Mac one, a Chrome OS, Android, and so on. Um, not sure how feature. Uh, how much, how how well they are in terms of feature, how how good the feature parity is, but um, it was something that yeah. I found uh, a few years ago, and it looks different now than it did back then. So they must have changed quite a few things. They, they're certainly still well under development, as I understand it. I guess it's the, also the not meta that expensive. No, it's not. no. Mm. The the meta version of my pick of the week is is to make sure that you do go back occasionally and look at apps that you've tried in the past, because two years on, they've mm. probably been developed quite a lot, you know. And so mm. it, it doesn't just because you tried something a while back doesn't mean that it's the same thing that you tried. So, you know, and that's what's happened to me this week. Very cool. cool. Uh, Jeremiah, you brought us an exhibition. In the end, no, it's it's a photographer, um, and it, it really is a, a reference to getting out there with your cameras. Uh. <laughs> this is a, mm. 
you know, Samuel okay. Bourne, uh, British photographer. Um, these are up in the in in the uh, in Kashmir, I think. And and uh, but reading reading how he took them and what w was required is uh, certainly as interesting as the photograph itself, which is pretty amazing. I mean, when you mm -hmm. look at it, they're shooting there at 18,000 feet um, uh, up in, in, in Kashmir. I know this because my, my cousin has a house just in the next valley. I'm um, trying to and, navigate uh, this, this website, which is kind of difficult. Yeah, just just close out the big picture, and you'll see the blurb which you well, hit. How, at the how do I do that? But I'm going to refresh this know. one. <laughs> there go. you go. If you hit the read more, uh, it's fascinating. But it will, you know, it'll tell you. Look, um, he had porters and glass plates and goats and <laughs> food just to yeah. to make these pictures. Uh, it, it is not like throwing it in your bag. The, Not the really. Commitment. It's the opposite the of what Imar is looking for. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And then yeah. To, to protect <laughs> and, and develop these mm -hmm. glass negatives, they had portable dark rooms, and you know, mm -hmm. wow, uh, the commitment is staggering and should inform mm -hmm. um, us every time we take a camera out for a walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. And okay. last but not least, Imar, you brought us a photographer. It is a photographer that I found. These are incredible. Her name's Katharina Boss. I believe she's German, Chris. Um, uh, I particularly, I suppose, maybe don't open that one, YouTube censoring, um, but they're excellent. So do look at them in your own time. The cinematic portraits, I was thinking of you all mm -hmm. um, with that collection there. I thought you'd all like those. Mm. Um, Really amazing stuff. The portrait of the art uh, artist as a young mother, they're spectacular, but not really for YouTube consumption. Well, um, so far, beautiful. they look clean enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it depends on what collection you click on. <laughs> but, okay. um, yeah, they're kind of irreverent and just brilliant, some of them, yeah. Very cool. Thanks for the tip. Katarina yeah, Bossa. Really yeah, I've, nice. I've heard the name, yeah. but um, trying to place her and I'm not sure. I will certainly She's do a dive there. into I think she lectures in one of the universities or something as well. Awesome. All right. I think I well, believe. That was good. We had a we had a gear a gear episode led yeah. by Emer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, that, I'm I'm really looking so, forward yeah. how this is going to uh, where this is going to end up, me too, how this is going too. to develop. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Develop. <laughs> Pun <laughs> intended. Yeah. Well, it'd be great to get some feedback and advice from anybody who's listening. So yes, yes. So everyone, uh, oh, ch check out our our Discord. I think that's really the good place to go. It's all linked from. The future photography from our main website and of course uh link and it's open 24 yeah. 7. thanks everyone <laughs> take care bye. take care bye bye and bye bye now you've been listening to the future of photography Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Mm -hmm.